Patrick Henningsen and TNT. And welcome back to the Patrick Henningsen Show with me, Basil Valentine, in for Patrick. Today, Friday, the 9th of February, 2024. Well, it happened 50 years ago. It was Frost Nixon. This time round, it's Tucker Putin. The big interview, two hours, including a full half hour lecture on the history of Russia and the Ukraine from Vladimir Putin, who for the most part came across as being really rather affable, um, much to the irritation of the war hawks and stenographers in Washington and London, who have been doing their best to demonize him and paint him as some kind of modern version of Adolf Hitler in the last couple of years. So Tucker did a I thought largely a very good job. He got some interesting sound bites out of Putin, who uh, some observers have said at one point might have appeared to have regretted the uh, invasion of Ukraine. He certainly didn't seem all that enthusiastic about it. He seemed rather sad that it had ever happened. Though of course, he was happy to lay the blame uh, at the door of the West. Joining me now to unpack Tucker. Putin is Swedish geopolitical analyst and TNT contributor Mats Nielsen. Welcome to the program, Mats. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. So uh, was it the epoch-defining conversation that might change the course of world history? Or was it just uh, a once great uh, American cable news host trying to resurrect his career on the X platform with a failed dictator, or does the truth lie somewhere between the two, Mats? Well, as, as, as always with me, I'm going to answer that uh, it's somewhere between the two. Uh, I always try to move in the gray areas. There is seldom anything that's black and white in, in geopolitics. And uh, as for this speech, there are so many threads to begin and uh, end with, but... Uh, I might actually begin contemplating the fact that Putin brought up Novgorod and Rurik and uh, Swedish Varangian Vikings from Roslagen in, in his speech. And, and being a legal historian who has actually studied the birch bark manuscripts of Nov Novgorod, I felt quite happy because I, I, I felt at ease listening to this. And... Uh, it, of course, it was a history lesson, and uh, but I think it was a much needed history lesson. You 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 can you can always you can always debate if if uh, the history was correct. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, this it wasn't Rurik from the primary chronicle. Uh, per, perhaps it was uh, Oleg and Dir and Askold from the Novgorod First Chronicle that founded Russia. I mean. But these are details. The important thing is that Putin presented uh, a, a narrative that uh, that can be dissected and uh, discussed, uh, which is uh, which makes for it, it puts pressure on the Western acad academica to actually come up with answers to putin's statements uh, and they they need to um, they need to do so i mean for example when when putin says that ukraine is an artificial state and that was shaped at the hands of joseph stalin which putin admitted what was was a man who didn't uh, do much good for for the greater uh, good of humanity it's I saw that one professor actually said that, in a sense, Putin is correct. The so Soviet leadership drew up the borders of the Soviet Republic, almost like a, the Western colonial powers did. And uh, this, the BBC actually writing uh, on their webpage that, uh, in a sense, Putin is correct. Uh, that's even the history lesson. Uh, somehow tells people in the West that there is a bit of truth in what P 
Putin tells us. Uh, but, but, but leaving leaving Novgorod aside, and if we concentrate on the effects of the speech as such, I don't think, given the news cycle in the West, I don't think this is going to leave a impression uh, that's going to last. That said, not in the West. However, I have noticed that in China and in India, there have been quite a lot of hits on Weibo, for example, on the Putin speech. The Putin speech is widely discussed in China, especially in light of that it was just one or two days ago that Putin and uh, uh, Xi jointly uh, made a statement uh, concerning the new closer relationship between Russia and China when Putin congratulated China on the Lunar New Year. So I think that uh, the Chinese are the ones looking at where is Russia going with this? Uh, because tr as you know, traditionally Russia has been uh, hasn't been a really close ally to China. It's actually the West that has more or less pushed uh, Russia in, into China's uh, sphere of cooperation. And uh, in, in the speech, uh, Putin said that, um, let's see, what, what did he say? Uh, just drawing it from memory here. He said something about Russia has uh, uh, 150 million people and China has 1.5 billion and it, its economy is growing fast or by leaps and bounds, I think he said, 5% per year. So somehow Putin was actually warning Tucker in the interview about the power of China. Now you could interpret mm -hmm. this as Russia or Putin once again extending, extending a hand towards the West saying, are you sure you really want to distance yourself from Russia? Are you sure you want Russia in the influ in, in the with together with the Chinese? Or it's just or Putin was just a making a statement of facts that China's potential is enormous and the West now has to live with the mistake it's already made. I, I'm not. I'm not certain one way or the other what, what this uh, what he means. But if if the West were smart, they could take it as an interpretation. Wow, we best take this invitation and start negotiating a peace deal with Russia. Uh, obviously, it's not really plausible, but it's just uh, yeah. one interesting one of many interesting takeaways fr from this uh, this interview. Um, um, Putin also pointedly said that uh, China always seeks compromise, he said. Uh, yes. His whole yes. tone of voice and body language changed when he started talking about China um, and uh, how they generally sought to avoid confrontation, uh, I think he said. Yeah. Um, the reaction from Western Europe has been perhaps predictable. Janice Klug who claims to be an expert on the Russian economy with the German Institute for International and Security Affairs, says that she overestimated Tucker Carlson. He really does look incredibly naive at many points in the conversation. Putin runs circles around him and gives lectures that are mostly really, really boring. I think uh, Tucker's disingenuousness, that's part of his whole interviewing style. He aims to come across as this sort of rather folksy American honest broker without preconceptions who sort of treats people as he finds them and gives them a chance to speak, uh, which he did. I think he was obviously in awe of Putin to some extent. I mean, there he is sat with this, you know, incredibly powerful world figure. Um, and not all that long ago, he was making the tea at MSNBC, so, you know, um, but uh, I think it's unfair to say that uh, Putin ran circles around him. That's a typical, or dare I say, now typical uh, German attitude that by allowing Putin to express himself, 
you're somehow allowing him to run circles around you. I think a lot of Western commentators are are just deep down slightly envious of the fact that Russia has a leader that is very knowledgeable. I doubt that many Western leaders could sit down and have this level of discussion for two over two hours with any journalist giving these lessons and giving these backgrounds and be, being able to draw all these conclusions from history, from current affairs, from culture. Uh, I mean, it just it, it's it, it's slightly comical or, or should I say farcical that Biden uh, just uh, earlier today made his uh, by now already infamous press conference where he tried to tell the journalists that they were being silly, uh, claiming he w had suffered from dementia, and then he suddenly called uh, called the Mexican president sissy. Uh, it's it's you can't really compare them, and and I think it just proved Putin's point uh, that America isn't really run anymore by its uh, its own uh, president it's uh, the uh, uh, oh he help me out here if you will there was a um, part about cau caucuses now i remember yes i i am back on track there was a part in the interview where putin said that uh, there there was a time when he talked to the american president and he asked the american president Please back off from supporting uh, groups within the Caucasus that you, both you and I know are only there to cause trouble and mayhem and havoc. And Putin said that the U.S. president, I'm guessing this was Bush, he said, my God, do you have any proof for this? And Putin said, yes, I do. I, I, I can present this to you, as he did. And the president said, "I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a talk. I'm going to have a solid talk uh, with with uh, my uh, people." And then Putin continued, and he said, I, "I asked the FSB to write to the CIA and inquire about how did this talk go down? Did the CIA have this talk with the president?" And the CIA didn't answer. And then the second time they didn't answer. And then apparently the third time they answered. We're not going to stop this, and it, it, this is this is this is serious, serious news in a way because it it proves that the president of the United States is but a figurehead of a more sinister grouping that's running the United States and the Washington Empire, and uh, that means that whatever the president says or whatever Washington says can't can't be trusted uh, and of course she knows this and of course putin knows this and of course all the world leaders probably know this but um unfortunately i'm guessing the american public don't know this because uh, they're not doing much about it are they now so in that sense i hope that putin's speech especially the parts where he tells the truth about who is actually running the united states is broadly by way of social media sent across the United States and reaches the voters in the United States. One can always hope. Yes, I mean, I think the point about uh, the figurehead of the president not actually being in charge of anything has never been more true uh, than with the current popping J, Biden. I mean, he's barely in control of his own limbs, let alone anything else. Um, and it's quite obvious that, you know, other figures behind the scenes are pulling the strings. Uh, coming back to the CIA, of course, um, that's who Putin identified as being behind the Nord Stream disaster. The only way to describe it, the 2022 explosions. Um, of course, it's still being investigated, and Sweden has now dropped its investigation, saying it lacks jurisdiction, but it handed over its evidence to the German investigators. 
uh, Putin was pressed for evidence by uh, Carlson and said, I won't get into details, but people always say in such cases, look for someone who is interested. But in this case, we should not only look for someone who is interested, but also for someone who has capabilities, because there may be many people interested, but not all of them capable of sinking to the bottom of the Baltic Sea and carrying out this explosion. Now, uh, again, this is one of these incidents that's been memory hold by Western media. Yes, that's that's. that's it's as if it didn't happen. You know, a tremendous environmental catastrophe, and one with disastrous consequences for European economies, particularly the German economy. But uh, after it became clear that the Russians had not inflicted this self-inflicted wound, uh, all, all interest seemed to be dropped. Do you have any idea, you're in Sweden, Mats, what the Swedish investigators might have discovered? Well, I, I, I wish I did. And uh, I, I, just going back a, a bit, I, I love the part where in this in the interview where Putin told Tucker that the CIA, the organization you once tried to join, <laughs> uh, I believe he said, which was which was uh, immensely funny uh, at face value, uh, and then he 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 said that uh, well well you you didn't do it because perhaps you had an alibi but the CIA didn't, and it's 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 as you said that uh, once once it was almost this, once it was established that the point couldn't really be the blame couldn't really be pointed towards Russia, all interest dropped. No one was uh, interested in investigating it further. And as for the Swedish uh, preliminary investigation, I have sent for for the preliminary investigation, uh, and I'll have to see how much of it is uh, classified. But hopefully, I will be able to get some of it uh, sent to me, and uh, I will be able to to perhaps get back to you on on uh, any findings. But. Um, the forensics, the Swedish uh, submarines were there, that much we know. So I believe that the forensics are solid. However, what these forensics show, and if if or they have been tampered with or not, and if it's classified or not, uh, that time will tell. But currently, I believe, like you said, the German investigators are now sitting on this information. And... Uh, Perhaps they will try and create a scenario where this overly ri ri ridiculously uh, ridiculous theory about the the boat called Andromeda was responsible will be the main theory. I don't know, I, I'm, but I'm sure everyone in Europe or all the countries investigating it in Europe just they definitely do not want to point the blame towards America. Or towards any undersea submarines pertaining to Norway or the United States Navy, for obvious reasons. So, so we we will have to see about this. Uh, oh, uh, can I can I continue? Please do. Yes, because I just remembered there was also a very very important part in this about uh, con um, pertaining to the fact that you can't trust. The United States, and I, I think you remain, rem, remember the Russian withdrawal from Kiev in during the spring of 2020. And it's been told that Russia withdrew because uh, they were forced to. H however, in the interview with Tucker Carlson, Putin was very clear that the Russian retreat was done after urgings from Western mediators to make it easier to achieve a negotiated settlement between Russia and Ukraine. But instead, what happened was that the Ukrainian side broke off negotiations uh, directly after the Russian forces left Kiev. So, so it was clear linking, a clear linking of the events that at least I never heard before. The official Western version is that Russia retreated when they realized it was a fool's errand to try and take Kyiv, and the Russian side then used the peace argument as a smokescreen to hide behind. Now, if, 
and I, you can only say if because you never know it's after all i'm moving in the gray area and it's geopolitics and you have to remember everyone kind of tries to make the truth a bit better but if the russian narrative is, is true then all trust between russia on the one side and ukraine and the west must be totally broken first the russian abandonment of the minsk agreement and then this declared deception. I don't think Russia will ever again show good faith first. That's for certain. So, so, so um, it's uh, it's a really serious claim that that Russia makes because the deception, the level of deception doing this uh, is uh, that definitely hurts diplomacy. It, it definitely hurts the George war in favor of the war war that's uh, that risks dragging all of us down into World War three so once again the Western powers have overplayed their hand betting on Russia being weak and you never never bet on Russia being weak which no, I think this which, which I think this interview proved that the Russian leader compared to the leader of the free world, Biden, it, it's, 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 not even, it's not even a competition. It's just a technical knockout. Russia is much better yes. prepared for any conflict that might arise. So the West just needs to start negotiating and they need to do it yesterday. Well, I, I agree with you. If it was a boxing match, it would be deemed a mismatch. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and Putin was at pains to point out what uh, he felt was the deterioration in the quality of American leadership, even going so far as to say that uh, George Bush had actually impressed him, uh, which I was very surprised to say and to see. Um, uh, and that since then, uh, the Americans seem to have got progressively worse. I thought, though, that where Putin scored most heavily from a propaganda point of view was in talking about the denazification of Ukraine, because uh, this is one of those subjects that Western media have constantly tried to avoid, tried to play down uh, Ukraine's neo-Nazi links and brigades and ideology. Um, and uh, Putin said uh, that the Russian invasion was justified in order to denazify the country. Uh, and that the conversation he had with Zelensky, I thought was fascinating. He said that Zelensky's father fought against the fascists during uh, the Second World War. And I once talked to him about this. He said, Volodya, what are you doing? Why are you supporting neo-Nazis in Ukraine today when your father fought against fascism? He was a frontline soldier. I thought those were very pointed remarks. Yeah, yes, they were, and and, uh, and uh, history. I mean, it's it's uh, it, it's a complex history, and uh, I think now, basically, I think the the powers that be in Ukraine are uh, unwisely using this uh, the old Nazi soldiers, and they're re reinventing them as freedom fighters, and the effects of this they go so far as as we saw in canada they go so far that an an old nazi is in in the canadian parliament rebranded as a freedom fighter and applauded by the politicians of canada as happened a few months ago so it's uh, the ukrainian will to try and unify their uh, created nation has misfired and it's basically become a, a hot hotspot for for neo-nazi fighters to go there and and try to reassert the fourth reich sadly uh, and uh, it it just points to whatever happens in the future ukraine is going to unfortunately be a failed state for many many years to come and and uh, as putin said it, it's not something he welcomes because russia uh, Initially, I mean, Russia has always welcomed Ukraine. They even said it's fine by us if Ukraine joins the European Union because that will have economic effects on Russia as well. 
Uh, so it's never been about the economy. It's always been about the security. But since the CIA coup and since Ukraine went um, uh, full NATO, Russia has had to act in a way that's actually detrimental to Russia's economic interest, but its main interest, which always is security, which Putin realizes, means that he has had to do this. So uh, it's you don't have any real winners in this. You just have losers. But the ones that created the situation are trying to shift the blame towards Putin. And I think this interview squarely put the blame back where it belongs within the Western uh, government's handling of the situation since uh, 20, 2008 and forward. Finally, Mats, um, for all that uh, some Western observers are decrying Tucker for having gone in the first place or saying that it was a missed opportunity and uh, belittling Tucker's own geopolitical knowledge, uh, my inclination would be to suggest that, if anything, simply because two people are talking, uh, it has advanced the cause of peace. I think some of the fake narratives of the war party were undermined. Um, and in terms of uh, Putin's presentation, because he so rarely ever gets in front of Western audiences, uh, for all his faults, and he's no choir boy, uh, he nevertheless came across as uh, a rational human being with a good grasp of history and current events, even if you don't agree with him on everything. So I think in terms of attempts to demonize him, um, those have been well and truly put on the back burner. Most, most, most certainly, most certainly they have. And uh, yes. Hello. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there, Mats. Thank you very much for joining us. Swedish ah, okay. geopolitical analyst, Mats Nielsen. We're going to take a short break now. When we come back, I'll be joined by Matthew Lee of Inner City Press. And we'll be looking at the latest in Donald Trump's legal battles as he bids to become once again President of the United States. We'll be right back after this short break. TNT's Jeremy Nell. We mandate that the truth be told. Today's News Talk Radio, TNT.